now we can assault the tower properly. I do wish that some of these like D units and stuff were more easily accessible before literally the end game. Uh, just because it would be, I don't know, a little bit more interesting this way. Because you get more time with all the different forms, but... Is this a door I can go through? It is. Okay. Did I already do this one? What the heck? I guess so. I guess I didn't go down as far as I thought I needed to. Oops. Oh god, the solo wing is so cool. <laughs> it's just genuinely so sick looking. You just can't improve it. You can't improve it. It's just the sickest looking dragon. Uh, cool thing about the solo wing so the other dragon that we had we couldn't actually change the shape of but this one takes the form of all of Loki's forms in Panzer Dragoon's Vi like depending on which one you have it's kind of cool Yeah, okay, I just I went the wrong floor, that's why. Ooh, slow down. Whoa. Oh. Yipes. Here we go. This is where we want to go. Power 14 F East. Wait, no, this isn't the one I want to go to. I've already been here, haven't I? No, I haven't. Okay. Never mind. There we go. further down and try our best to, to navigate. Ooh, we got a save point. Nice. So it's like split into sections, basically. I'm surprised at the pace we've kept for this game. It's about as long, it, it took me about as long this time as it did the very first time I ever played it. Ultimus Gamer says, so to clarify, the tower was what killed humanity off in the first place after humans tried to use it to fix the planet? Not exactly. Um, the, the towers were created way, 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 way back long ago 
as a means of ensuring sustainability for the planet. And then over time, it turned on them. Uh, and they lo it's not that they lost control of it, it's just that population increased and their needs increased and they became more techno uh, technologically advanced. The tower turned on them and basically made it so that humanity can't, uh, can't increase to a certain size. That one reflects it, okay. Cool attack. Oh, fuck. We just gotta keep hitting it, I guess. My shield was still up. So even though it says anti-shot, we're doing pretty solid, uh, solid damage here. Yeah, that was a pretty close call. Ugh. Hey, and we got the final, uh, we got the final skill, I think. I think there's no more left after this. There is that the direction we want to go? I guess so. Let's check. Uh, the, this is my one difficulty here is I can never tell where I'm going. Orb. Oh no, it's Kingdom Heartsing us. Uh, Ultima's Gamer says it also implies that humanity. Uh, humanity had even more advanced technology. 
怪物戦車始動東海の警戒態勢を解除します OK Just making sure なんだこのスイッチこの階の警戒システムを切り替えるスイッチ Uh, so, yeah, they say it、uh, had even more advanced and insane technology than the tower if it took so long for it to choose to wipe them out. I think the big thing is that it, they, were,、uh, they were experimenting with the dragon. So, there was a period of time where they, they all, you know, like the genetics laboratory here and stuff was a thing. Ooh. Oh, that's still cool.、Um, where、uh, basically. They,、uh, you know, they were experimenting with dragons and with, with getting armored uh, and, and uh, basically living weapons. And then we know from the, the Lightwing、uh, material that they were basically told bury it, don't do this, this is not good, only for suddenly a bunch of stuff to, to break down. And the drone system was, was ostensibly already online by the time this happened because Azul exists. Uh, and we know that there were drones. So it's, sim it's simultaneously maybe a hubris thing, but also, like, we know for, that there, there must have been some sort of status quo for a while where all these towers existed and where life was prosperous because there's ruins everywhere <laughs> filled with this tech. So it's unclear exactly how long their period of prosperity was, but at some point the towers、uh, basically said, actually, humans are too dangerous.、Uh, dragons are really bad. We don't want them taking us out.、Um, it's, it's for the good of the, the nation to、uh, kind of deal with that. So, or good of the nation, good of the planet, I mean, to deal with that, and then just started attacking human settlements and.、Uh, Kind of controlling the ecosystem and making sure that humanity wasn't able to exist outside of its, its limits. I do think that there is a really interesting sort of environmentalist tale about, like, in this game、uh, because of that. Like, it's a very intriguing aspect of the game. No! Oops. Paragon says, You sure know the whole lore to heart. I mean, not really. We just we just played it <laughs> this week, so it's, it's top of mind. But also, I mean, in terms of the lore, it's not really that complicated.、Uh, there's a lot more stuff in Orda that I don't really remember. Super clearly,、um, that we'll have to because Orda really blows the top off a lot of this stuff and like makes a lot of things make sense.、Um, so it's just a matter of、uh, I, I, need to, I need to see that stuff again to really remember some of it. But let's see. Ultimate Gamer says, So there's another game in the series? Yep, there is a rail shooter that came out on the original Xbox,、uh, developed by Smilebit,、uh, which is basically a bunch of people、um, where a bunch of people from the team Andromeda that made these games went on. All right, what did, what did we need to do? I was trying to pay attention, but I completely got distracted by the fact that the,、uh, the audio cut off there at the end. There we go. I think we go here.
but yeah, the game, I mean, it, it, for all intents and purposes, the game is pretty, sh the games are pretty short. The lore is pretty focused. So it's not too hard to, to understand what's going on because ultimately the first two games are really cinematic kind of environmental storytelling with some cutscenes in, in between. This one sets up the rest of the world and the rest of the stakes pretty self-contained. And then, uh, you know, building off of the stuff that we saw before and then Orda just like, decides like all right here's where this whole story is ending and where everything is going um which is interesting Orta is very very good it is a very exceptional rail shooter uh definitely one of my favorite just like arcadey video games of all time uh, it is it is a very cool game and i'm really excited to play it Did I just, like, go the wrong way? <laughs> Where am I? Here's Clark says, getting sleepy now. Night all. Good luck taking out the tower toaster. Thank you. Ultimus Gamer says, that's shocking to hear. Most games are the last of their series or generally because they were awful. I mean, that game is the last of its series because it's just the last game. It's just, the, there's just no more story after it, you know? I'd, I mean, I'd love to see more in this universe, but it's also very self-contained. It was a last hurrah. And in many ways, like, this game was a sales disaster saga, I mean. The Panzer Dragoon Saga was an absolute sales disaster that uh, failed on every account. It did not live the way that it needed to. Uh, it just, it just didn't, didn't perform the way that it needed to and it killed the series and it killed multiple of, like it killed its developers. <laughs> like that's part of the other thing is that two people on the team died and while it wasn't entirely the fault uh, of development in all cases, the development of this game was heavily attributed to uh, you know, the conditions that led to both of those deaths. Um, one of them was like a motorcycle accident and the other was like actually straight up, uh, suicide. So like, that's just like, a, it's just wild. So there's, um, the, I, I think that there is, I went the wrong way. Oops. So I think that there is something to be said about like this game kind of killed the franchise. But uh, but Orta was like a really interesting example of like creatives from a different, a, a technically a new studio under different creative goals and ambitions, kind of being like, all right, we are going to do something new and different and uh, make a different game and try to like fix all of this. Uh, and I think they did. They did a really good job of it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm very puzzled. I, I am having trouble just visually understanding the layout of this place. Um, that's my bad. I'm not 100% sure. Do I go up? I must, right? I thought I went here already, and it led to nothing. Yeah, this led to absolutely nothing for me. What? I'm very confused. We have to find a way down to the seventh floor somehow. This will take us down to nine.
Oh, it took us down to eight. Okay. But what's down here? There is nothing here. Huh? A little bit turned around. That's fine. We'll figure that out. Azure Paragon says, Most developers either opted for 2D games entirely or kept 3D games limited. Yeah, I mean, part of that also is just due to the way the Saturn works. It's VDP 1 and 2 uh, video processors, like, do kind of different things and, and operate on different layers simultaneously. So it's like, you know, uh, extremely advanced 3D games and 2D games were, like, very complicated to get running. But you, if you were had a primarily 2D game, you could make that 2D game look incredible using the Saturn because of the way that the system interacted. But the Saturn was exceptionally difficult to program for. That was kind of another thing. Um, so. But uh, I would, I mean, I would love to visit more um, Saturn RPGs and stuff on the channel. There we go. I have to do this. I t I totally missed that I could actually interact with that. Um, but but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things to say about the development of this game, and sort of how how the whole game kind of came to be. Um, so, you know, uh, there's there's uh, a link in the description of every single episode of this series. There's multiple links, actually, to multiple articles detailing the development of this game uh, that I highly recommend people read because it's, v it's very, very interesting. Uh, and it goes to show that very good art is very hard to make and very... Uh, like, it comes at a cost, and it's a very brutal cost. Um, and I don't even just mean the lives that were lost. I mean, like, this is a game that everyone bet everything on, and then after the money was spent, there was nothing there. Like, this this game could have just tanked a company, you know? Uh, and in in the modern world, in the modern era, a any game developer that tried to make this game would have lo just absolutely l lost everything, you know? Um, so there was like a lot riding on the game and a lot of things going on. Uh, and it was just, it, this game was the dream of a future that couldn't have been. Like, is, is really the best way to describe it. Uh, there was so much riding on it, and then, but, but by the time it landed, it just was, there was no future there anymore. And that's really sad, but that's really interesting as well. And I, I think this game in general kind of represents a really interesting, like, taste of a history that could have been. Um, just because, like, again... Obviously, there was the Dreamcast after this, and a lot of people feel this way about Dreamcast games, is that the Dreamcast feels really unique and weird and, like, something that shouldn't have exist, existed, like, out of time. So, just odd. Just really strange. Uh, really strange development time. Really strange era in, in gaming. Um, but it led to a lot of really interesting stuff. I, you know, I feel like there are a lot of Sega channels on YouTube. There we go. Uh, but I feel like there are a lot of uh, Sega channels on YouTube that like really make their whole channel identity 
uh, about Sega and Sega platforms. Sega Lord X is like a really good example. His his channel's great. Um, uh, and then the, the Dreamcast, you know, another good example is, you know, Rishin says, what I usually hear about it is that it tried to do things that have since become standard but suffered because technology just wasn't quite there yet. That's definitely part of it. I mean, the other thing is just that the PlayStation 2 was a marketing powerhouse that did not have the stink of a previous failed console on it. Uh, and it, this is like a, this is like a hard thing to explain, but like, when a game or a, a system is bad, that is not the system that is punished for being bad. It's always the next thing, the next game in a series, the next system that sells worse. And it's really, really, really hard to recover from that. Um, and, and you see this time and time again, a game comes out, it sells 45 million copies, it's the worst game in the franchise, the next game comes out, it's a huge return to form, no one buys it because they hated the previous one. Uh, and the same thing goes for, for consoles, it went for the Saturn and the Dreamcast. Dreamcast came out, it was a crazy future system that was like really incredible and amazing, and then just as much as a, a hype as the Dreamcast had, it just like, the PS2 was coming out, you know? Uh, and the PS2 was an entirely new generation. It looks so much different than the Dreamcast. It, w it immediately had developer support, immediately had a million things going for it. Could play DVDs. DVDs were the future, you know? Um, and the Dreamcast was basically a PC. <laughs> like it was, it was a computer that played computer games, which is cool. Uh, very, very cool. But um, it wasn't what a lot of people were looking for when they wanted a new ho you know, home console to set in front of their big box TV and have a good time. Uh, and yeah, it could use the internet, which is sick. Love that. Um, but it, it is what it is. Ultimus Gamer says, on the other hand, Nintendo Wii U happened and then the Switch came out. That's a special case. Uh, the, the Wii U didn't sell well or sold poorly, I should say. Not because people n knew what it was and thought it was bad or whatever. People didn't buy the Wii U because they didn't know it was a console. Like, it, people didn't realize the Wii U was a thing. Um, and then when it finally ended, the, the Switch happened and people thought it was the first new Nintendo console since the Wii. <laughs> like that, that's like a real thing that happened. Um, so that's a little bit different. Um, and plus the, the Switch is a handheld. It's very different than home television consoles. I don't want to hear in the comments about how all you people play your games, your Switch games on a TV. The Switch is a handheld console. It's designed as a handheld console. It happens to be dockable. It is a handheld console. It is powered as a handheld console. It uses a mobile phone processor from 2013. It is meant to be played handheld. That is why the Switch Lite exists and why things like HD Rumble and stuff have not really been supported long term. Uh, for that console, it is very, very clear that it is mostly a handheld first system, and that is how most people play it. Um, so, in terms of a market skew, uh, the, the Wii, or the Switch, was just really strange, uh, as like a, a tour de force, because it really was kind of just like, hey, here's, here's the next handheld by Nintendo, <laughs> the thing you've been waiting for. I'm not sure where I'm going now. Let's see. Kettle says, my switch is for when I'm traveling and can't lug my desktop along. I feel that. I, I have a switch. I played one game on the switch last year. I played Super Mario RPG. It was very good. Uh, my switch gathers dust. It is sitting behind my computer monitor right now, docked in case I ever need to uh, capture footage. There are games on there that I would like to, to capture footage for, but uh, Nintendo, so I don't know if that will ever happen. Uh, you know, the, there there is a world where I cover the Baten Kaitos remakes, but I'm not sure, or remasters, but I'm not sure if that is this world. <laughs> to be frank, I really don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I see. Okay. 
of those gamers says, considering how poorly the 3D was received, the 3DS sold well. See, I don't really think the 3D was poorly received. I think it just became a vestigial aspect of the game so quickly. Uh, you know, so many games released, so many killer apps for the 3DS released, and they just didn't even support 3D. Um, because that system was also a handheld with a very weak processor that honestly could not support 3D in most of the games that they really wanted to push it in. So, um, you know, it just is what it is. Uh, I, I am, I am of the take that the 3DS is a good legacy platform if you are still playing DS games on it. But I generally think that the 3DS as a console is a really terrible game system. I don't think it has many good games on its own. I think most of the best 3DS games are remasters of games from other systems, most notably the DS. Uh, so there's there's some stuff there that I just think, you know, I don't think is, is a particularly... I don't think the 3DS is going to stand the test of time. I just don't. I, I think that people are going to forget it over time because I... You compare it to something like the uh, the DS, and it's incredible. It, one of the best systems ever made with one of the most experimental uh, libraries of all time, one of the biggest game libraries of all time. And then you have the 3DS, which is like, it's got some remakes and an Animal Crossing, I guess. Woo! Like, cool. <laughs> all right. One, I think one of the, the biggest appeals of the 3DS is that it plays DS games. <laughs> Which is like, alright. Rishin says, and it has a terrible effective field of view with the 3D. Yeah, I, I, with the 3D on, I, I definitely think that's true, but I also just think if you're gonna hold a console like that, you're gonna hold it close to your face. It's just gonna be straight on, so it's like, whatever. I actually liked the 3D and the 3DS, and I, I wish that more games like utilized it in an interesting way. Just so many games didn't. But those Zelda remakes look great with the 3D on. That's for sure. But when I th when I think of like really inventive handhelds and stuff, especially when it comes to Nintendo handhelds, like the DS is just king. It's just such an, a wild platform uh something the, the level of experimentation that was happening at that time period and the level of uh market change that happened then with especially like weird games that were coming out uh from japan that like no one had ever heard of is just like so unique just truly a one-of-a-kind system i don't think we'll ever have a handheld like the yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll ever have a handheld like the DS ever again. Ultimus Gamer says, I don't know if I want Nintendo to use better processors or to keep their prices relatively low. Nintendo could literally use better processors and keep their prices low. There, there's no reason for the Switch to be as as underpowered as it is. It's it's des desperately in need of a refresh, That's that's for sure. Where am I going? Did I even need to halt this? I guess I did. But people know my thoughts on Nintendo and on the Switch. I am not, uh, I'm just not a huge fan. Uh, White Mage Boar says, I, I wanted to say the DS had more going for it than DS remakes. It also had plenty of N64 remakes. It had like a couple. It had like two or three, right? Dora's Mask, Ocarina of Time. Uh, were there any others? Uh, Diddy Kong Racing, did that get a 3DS remake or was that a DS remake? Star Fox 64 3D? Is that a 3DS game or was that a DS game? I don't remember. Where in the sweet love of God am I going? <laughs> I am so lost. Command was DS, that's right.
there was the Star Fox remake on Wii U. Was it a remake? I thought Star Fox Zero on the Wii U was just a bad Star Fox game. <laughs> I thought that game was just, I didn't, I didn't even realize that was a remake. I thought it was just a bad game. Like another Star Fox that they made. That game was abysmally terrible. Sheepish Justice says it's kind of a remake. I mean, isn't every single Star Fox game kind of a remake? They're all just like sort of the same game. I feel like all of them, you go through the same few levels and doing the same things. All right, here we go. Yeah, reimagining. That makes sense. All right, battle droid time. Let's kill this guy. I didn't mean to press that, but that's fine. Yeah, so this thing has a really long time between attacks. Seizure warning, I guess. I mean, this was from that time, I guess, when you could just do that. Uh, I don't know if there's anything I can do to fix that. Sorry, everyone who looked at this. Ten thousand experience. God damn. That was a one-hit kill on my brain. <laughs> Oof. Toaster don't go in the wrong door challenge. Impossible. Alright. Oh, I can't see.
what is in here? Nothing? I could have, I guess I could have seen that. No! Uh, depth perception is hard. This new gun's pretty good. Love that. We got frame one barrel roll there. That's pretty good, huh? Getting so close. <laughs> yeah, we've already been here technically, haven't we? I don't know if the elevators work before, uh, if we have the alarm going. Nice. We have 999 BP, nice. I think that might be the cap. So any levels we get from here are probably just secondary concern. Probably just increase our like gun power and stuff like that. Keep on going. Ugh, I suck. Do I need to actually t turn off the alarm is my question. I'm probably gonna hit level 50 if I keep playing this poorly. Let's check. Let's go back and turn it off and then just head wherever we're going because I don't want to be in 150 more fights. Making me sweat. Making me sweat, game. Why are you doing that? No! Ah. Alright, well. Time to fight another guardian or sentinel or whatever these things are called. Ah! <laughs> oh no. Alright. No, oh, I was so close. This is gonna give me an excellent. Nah, just great. Okay, well. All right. 
ガーディアンを倒したことで銅の防衛システムもだいぶ無力化してるわ1階まで降りれば最上層までの直通エレベーターが使えるかもしれないコントロールエリアに降りる前に塔の外へ出て体勢を整えることも可能よねえ、ウェラニーズディダー作動停止しますか I have like multiple full elixirs I'm good I'm good, I'm prepared Close to accidentally hitting that. Flash chip, nice. What's down here? All right. I don't hate that. Oh, I can feel it coming up. I'm, I'm getting excited. Just take care of these so we don't have to fight anything. Oh, hey. Nice. Sick. Is there anything in here? No. Huh. Weird. Anything in? There's nothing there. In here. Try glass chip. Okay. Elixir. Ultimate Gamer says, Is the music slowing down or is it just you?、Uh, I think it's just you. Okay, what are down these? Can I just not go here? Okay, so I, maybe I need to. Oh, I deactivated the rotor pile, so I can just. Yeah, I can just take care of those things, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't know. I am a little bit confused, admittedly, here. Hmm. We're so close, but. I'm so confused. Alright. 
but yeah, I'm, I'm already, I'm thinking about what games I want to play after this and, and what, what I want to, um, like queue up for more footage and reviews. And I'm not, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Um, I mock is pretty high up there. Um, I'm pretty interested in doing dot hack, uh, just cause why not, you know, uh, it's fun. It's cool. Um, I was thinking about doing the Grandia games, because I feel like not enough people talk about them. Uh, the Lunar games could be fun. The thing is, is that streaming JRPG is just exhausting, just so tiresome. This game is amazing, and I love it, and it's 16 hours long. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, playing, playing Grandia would take me, you know, 50 hours or whatever. I think those are are much more, you know, games that I would want to play once I can quit my job and do this like full time. Azure Paragon says, is Grandia the longest RPG on the Sega Saturn? Probably. Um, that or Lunar. No, oh, fuck. This leg says Skies of Arcadia eventually could be fun. I'd love to do Skies of Arcadia. It's a game I've never finished. I never played the GameCube version. I, uh, my cousin had the Dreamcast version and I played a little bit of it like anytime I slept over his house. I know for sure I want to do a video on uh, Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness. Andrew Paragon says, man, uh, if I thought Xenogears was crazy long, about 90 hours on first playthrough, Persona uh, 2 Eternal Punishment was psychotic. That's a long time to take to play Xenogears. That's... That's interesting. I think my first run through Xenogears, I was a pr pretty completionist and I beat it in like 40 hours. Persona games are known to be painfully long by design, but P2EP clocked in at 110 hours. I 100 percent at EP in like maybe 60. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's it's not that long. I, I don't think that Eternal Punishment is as hard as Vagrant Story. Yeah, you, go back and replay that game. Don't, don't come at me with this. I replayed Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment like probably two years ago. I did a 100% run of all of the Persona games. Uh, and I, I went through from Persona 1 all the way up through Persona 5 Royal. Uh, doing 100% max social links, new game plus to complete everything. Uh, and the longest one was Persona 5 Royal for me at 165 hours. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Eternal Punishment wasn't that long or even that hard. It's, it's, it has annoying battles and I played the PS1 version too. So it wasn't like, it wasn't the nicer or more streamlined PSP version. Though I have played the PSP version of that game. I played it on um, uh, PSP when it came out in Japan. Ezra Paragon says, speaking of, Dark Cloud 2 was fun and long, personal PS2 favorite. I would love to do the Dark Cloud games, um, and I would really love to do specifically, uh, like, oh, uh, what's it called? Okage, Shadow King. I'd love to do that game. I'd love to revisit it, I should say. 
because I played that when I was a teenager. I owned that game. Ugh. Hey, level up to 48. That's not terrible. <sighs> I'm always a little bit further away from it than I think I am. Fine, we're just grinding experience, it's whatever. <laughs> I just need to know that I can basically brush right through it as long as I, uh... There we go. I'm just gonna fuck it, I'm just gonna go. Paragon says, if you want super hard RPGs besides SMT Nocturne, play Breath of Fire 5. I've played Breath of Fire 5. I just don't think RPGs are hard. I didn't even think Shin Megami Tensei 3 was hard. I don't think I don't think there's any Shin Megami Tensei game as I find particularly difficult. There we go. Exploitable even, says Azure Paragon. Yeah, I mean, I think that RPGs just by nature of how they progress, especially JRPGs are just like trivial. They're trivial games. You don't really need to, once you solve the first encounter, you've solved every single one. I think there are very few JRPGs that manage to get like strategic combat right or in an interesting way. This game is one of them. I really liked Chain Echoes. I really want to play Sea of Stars. Um, you know, all those games I, I'm interested in. But I think for the most part, JRPGs are just kind of brain dead games. <laughs> like they're just not, they're not particularly. Uh... See, that's interesting. We just got Berserk Vampire at the very end of the game. But it's only really helpful to us. That means that doing the Encock side quest to cure him and get the berserk vampire from his dad only helps us for about 30 minutes of gameplay. Curious. Azure Paragon says, well, time to look back at Ikaruga and Battletoads. I definitely love uh, Ikaruga very much. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's just pattern recognition. That's just a shmup, you know, like it, all of these games. I think the, the key is, is that it's really hard to, to be a difficult game. Uh, I think, or rather, let me rephrase. I think that people mistake having strict mechanics for being difficult. Uh, and so like games like Ikaruga don't scare me because I've played shmups before. Like I've played Toho. Like I know, I know how, how these kinds of games work. Right. So there definitely is an overwhelming nature to them when you are just playing them for the first time and you have no idea what's going on, but like you just learn it. Like it's just a learning process. You figure it out. I love Radiant Silver Gun as well, yeah. Radiant Silver Gun's a great game. Uh, where am I going? Here we go.
All right. Yeah, there was a period in my life when I like I really liked shmups and I put the time in to learn how to like one credit clear things. Uh, so there there was definitely a time when there was like a lot more going on when I was trying to do a lot more with games and like figure things out. Oh, this is just this was just an elevator straight to the top of this, huh? Uh Huh. As our Paragon says for the thing, I found Majora's Mask much easier than Ocarina of Time, funnily enough. I don't really know if I find either of them particularly difficult. I think they're just, they are just what they are. I, yeah, both of those games are pretty easy, I would say. This is not where I wanted to go. I want to, I want to teleport back to the bottom. How do I get back to the bottom? Uh, I think both of those games are easy, like even for newcomers, right? Like people played those games as children and, and beat them and it's fine. I do think that there is such thing as a difficult game, like a game that demands, I, I think that there is just objective difficulty in like mental stack and like understanding, uh, understanding like prediction and stuff. This is why I think that like team games and games that require uh, like vast amounts of like prediction and player knowledge are just like objectively hard. Uh, things like, e even something like a, like a League of Legends or whatever, like any sort of competitive multiplayer game is going to be just the hardest game to play. And that's before you get into like complexity of design and, and control and input and stuff. Like when I think of hard games, like I do think of like, like I think uh, the example that I use pretty often is like Overwatch is like one of the hardest games I've ever played to actually play it well. It's very easy to play wrong but it is exceptionally difficult to play right. Uh, and I, I think that's like a really good example of like the kind of way that I think about difficulty where I don't think it is particularly hard to play like a shmup the correct way. It's daunting to learn how to do it and it takes time and you have to reframe how you're thinking about the game to get in the right mindset to even begin how to approach like you have to know what to look for or like slow like slow down your thought process and like figure out what to look for and things like that but that's uh that's very different than like simply not being able to execute or like having having to make decisions and making the wrong decisions every single time you go to make them uh that's sort of the thing that i think that defines a lot of like competitive multiplayer games and like makes them just gruelingly hard in a way that like a lot of games just kind of aren't so
まだあの里の人たちと一緒に行くことだって君をここに置き去りにして帰る君は何がどうあっても進む気でいるんだろうそれは僕も同じさそうね以前はあの人の望みに応えることそれが私の存在の全てだっただけど今の私は自分の意思で自分にしかできないことをしたいのせめて今だけは一人の人間として私が私であるためにそうかありがとうエッジ今のうちにお礼を言っとくわ私がここまで来られたのはあなたのおかげ君のおかげでもあるさ There we go. I really like their relationship and how it develops because they feel very much like like allies more so than friends or partners. They're like peers that have an interesting like connected relationship through this like mutual uh, destiny, which is like it's interesting. It's I feel like a lot of other things would play that a lot more romantically straight than this one does. Cool structure. そうすればあの人たちは無事逃げられるそんなアゼル君はどうなるんだ She didn't say Sestra won't be able to escape She's the other people will be able to だけど大丈夫死ぬわけじゃないわ So in Japanese, she doesn't say I love you. She says, but as for me, dot, dot, dot. Or like, as for my feelings. Mage Board says, Often you say that JRPGs are boring because once you solve an encounter, it's just brain dead, but that's a big part of what I want and look for in games. To be honest, being able to optimize the solution and having that solution be available. I think that makes sense. I think the issue is pacing. I think it's the progression of encounters and the limits of the systems. I think JRPGs oftentimes have very interesting systems that they just don't take advantage of. And you could be constantly iterating and improving on and optimizing these solutions and growing your interaction as a player.、Um, Rather than just relying on like the same few solutions repeatedly. So that's kind of my issue with JRPGs. I love this cutscene. This is super Baroque, by the way. This is incredibly Baroque seeming. Sure, Paragon says Baroque is a good way to put it. I'm, when I say Baroque, I'm talking about the game of Baroque, which is a Saturn game.
All right, so now we need to fight the different versions of the dragon wing. So first one is down. <laughs> I love the way this this Sestra and this strange cerebral network that you have to open a gate to an alternate dimension to get into is I just love the way it looks. I think it's so cool. Oh, I have a ton of Berserk Micro. That's cool. Yeah, this thing isn't gonna really do much to us. Protection wing. Sure, laser me. See what happens. I like it. It tickles. All right, so we took out that dragon. Level 49. I remember these fights being very hard the first time I played them. I wonder if I was just way under leveled or something. Oh, I love this music. <laughs> Anti stripe wing. This one's gonna be fast and annoying. Oh no, it's the, it's the strong one, the uh, the the angry one. Assault wing. Sure, dude. Do what you want. Try me. Right, this thing's done, though. Nine thousand that's not bad. Nine thousand experience, that's not bad. We might hit level fifty. The dream the dream is there. The dream's alive. We might make it happen.
Azure Paragon says, can you go beyond 50? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I do not remember the game that granularly. The levels are mostly easy to remember because there's, there's just not many of them and it's it, they're all kind of small. This is the password. This thing's a pain in the ass. Oh no, fuck! There we go. Star Ocean games let you go up to 255. I would, I really want to play them. That's a series that missed me completely. I played a little bit until the end of time when I was young, but nothing serious. Azure Paragon says, I want an RPG where you can go up to level 999. Isn't that, uh... I mean, it's an SRPG, but isn't that Disgaea? Doesn't Disgaea let you, like, go to level 4,000 billion bazillion? Yeah, people in chat are saying Disgaea. <laughs> I didn't take any damage. No, so I'm fine. Oh, that's what we love. Yeah, switch to spiritual class. Let me blow you up. Yeah, he's gonna Armageddon me. No, don't blade storm. Ouch. You're gonna do a lot of damage. I'll be okay, but I, I'll need to full heal. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ouchie. We have 10 full elixirs now? Jeez. I thought my shield ran out and I was really concerned for a second. Yeah, okay, lasers are just always weaker against the dragons. We will gun it down. No dragon can stand against the power of Edge's Glock. There we go. All right, we're doing good. 51. Okay, so you can go higher than 50. Look at that. I had no idea. All right. This is it. Let me show you my true power.
All right. So we have arrived here with a human in the strange warbling dimension that uh, is shown at the very beginning of the game. When we input our name and get all the everything set up, it is Edge's destiny. Oh, I'm not allowed to astral phantoms? Damn. Uh, what do I want to do? Phantom slashers, wraith slashers. something happening within Sestran. An impurity. So it sensed Lagi and activated Shelkoof. And there's Lindy. So is it implying that the impurity that was detected in Sestrin that was being uh, ejected out into the world was possibly Lagi? And then eventually, it was born into this Coolia. I love this, this CG, it's so good. So cool. Tower, Shelkoof, the dragon going down, Wadi. Alright, we're gonna let things charge really quickly, and then what I'm gonna do is item list, shield chip, item list, power chip. Item list. Don't need that. And I guess we will just uh, let this charge up a little bit more and then shoot it.
Loggy flying with a drone of some type, possibly trying to activate a tower. Eventually meeting Edge in this body that was separated from his soul after the tower fell. And look, it's the big dragon up there, it's weak point. Oop. Fight me, dude. So those will pierce my, uh... This might, this is gonna deal a lot of damage. The other thing in chat, Twitch doesn't like this too many particles, but this is just very trippy. This looks very weird. It might not be Twitch, it might just be the fact that it's a very strange looking, uh, moment in the game. This is the thing that's scary. The Unleash Ghost Dragons. Uh, I don't remember what I want to do here. I'm gonna Astral Phantoms real quick so that I counter attack if I'm hit. And then we're gonna move. Oh no. gonna turn and then it will just try to attack me all right we will definitely need to uh, elixir which is fine chance to move there. Ugh. So many health bars. No, wrong one. Come on. Oh, I guess that's fine. Phase change. Let's go to shield. And now we can... I don't know, let's just Dragon Phoenix. That's a pretty good amount of damage.
so cool. All right, where's the where's the health bar? Show me the health bar. Show me the health bar, please. I'm begging you. I'm just a destitute little boy who needs a, needs to see the health bar. Yeah, this thing. What does Berserker Rage do for me right now? Two thousand nine hundred. Okay. Psychic field. Phoenix again, whatever. I have the Berserk Maxis is needed to survive and, and heal myself, so not too concerned. Oh, there we go. Health bar is draining now. This fight was so much harder the first time I did it. I'm very in, I'm very interested in the conditions that have led to this. I, I'm not 100% sure why or what I did differently. I wonder if there's another phase that I just don't remember. There we go. Oh, Croy's here. Hey, Croy. We're hitting him with the Phoenix Blast right now. Croy showing up just in time to catch the end of this awesome game. の残した遺跡。全ては今私と共にある。さあ、私を殺してくれ。絶対の客人。それってドラゴンなの。そうではない。どういう意味だ。私は絶対の客人を導く存在に過ぎない。旧世紀の呪縛を解き。<笑> 世界を再び人の手に戻せるのは外の世界よりドラゴンに導かれたもの。君だけなのだ。絶対の客人よ。世界を人の手に返そうとしたあの時から始まった旅の。そして数千年にわたる使命が終焉する時が来たの。I'm the savior. I've been the divine visitor the whole time. ボタンを押してくれ。it's turned out that the whole time it's been a game about video games. It's been a game about playing video games. Uh, 
at the very beginning, we were inside Sestrin. We were the soul that entered Edge's body. We were the divine visitor. Whenever it talked about the dragon and his human, it was talking about us. Uh, Edge is alive because of us. This game came out in 1998. <laughs> Just think about that. It is up to you to control your own destiny and press the button. Edge looked at the screen and was just talking to us. <laughs> this game is so cool. <laughs> and there you go. The TV turns off. Sestrin has been unchained. The Divine Visitor has played his role. On you and Gash. Panzeries again. Rufiza, lay teal. Dena. The Consul Ray Anosta. Dana Zas Echi. Image board says, Oh, the link is severed, so the character dialogue is no longer being translated into Japanese. Exactly. It's very cool. It's very cool. This game is so cool. It does so many cool things. Ugh. And that was Panzer Dragoon Saga. Uh, one of the cool things about this is like, as, as people are noticing in the chat right now, like a lot of the diegetic elements uh, in the game get translated into Japanese because we're the divine visitor, but then later, you know, when we're not there, it's all panzerese. Uh, it happens in the beginning, happens at the end. Uh, the player's role in this game, I think is a really beautiful thing because it is, this is, a game that people slaved and worked so hard to get out that was really there just to push the industry forward and to push the system forward and like be this dream of the future and it was created by creatives who wanted to make games like they were artists who were extremely uncompromising in their vision who basically were like we are going to do this thing because we love video games and we love people who play them and we want to play and make video games that are cool and push the limits of the system and they they push themselves <laughs> and they hurt themselves and they took on this incredibly brutal project to get this all done and then uh now you're here right and you've played this game and it's a completely different experience where you are the divine visitor you're the honored guest that is here to experience this thing that these people made for you that needs you to move you are the only person in the game that has any agency right the whole game you play thinking you're edge and the player obviously is going to put their uh suspension of disbelief into believing that they're this character but really at the end of the day it's us the player is the one with the agency as Sestrin says, we're the ones that have to push the button. We're the ones that determine whether or not this world continues moving or not. It's all by our action, the, the human behind the screen. Uh, you know, we're the savior of this story. And in a lot of ways, we're the people that were representative of like Team Andromeda's saviors. And we were the people that they were making this for. Um, and it's just, it's so awesome. It's so cool to see a game try to take on this kind of thing, especially at the time, uh, and especially in the genre that it was doing it in. Uh, it's just, it's so incredibly harmonious and cohesive. Uh, I, I bit my tongue basically the whole game, uh, wanting to not 
spoil this ending because there are so many points in the game that foreshadow this and hint at it. Uh, there's so many things about like the divine visitor. He's going to come and he's going to provide us uh, purpose and safety. Like all the people in Zoa think that the dragon is the divine visitor. They think that the dragon is the messenger of the gods. And in a way, the dragon is. In the first Panzer Dragoon and in the second Panzer Dragoon, we're not really controlling Lagi or Lundi or uh, Kale, where or Kyle or whatever his name is. Uh, we're controlling Lagi. <laughs> We're, we, Blaggy is our means of controlling and interfacing with the world. He is our messenger in the game space. Um, so you have this game, this, this really well-realized world with all of this really cool lore, but that lore isn't built off of a fantasy uh, setting. It's actually built off of this metaphor of like every single thing that we have done. Uh, when you look at it through this lens, you have like, it's a dying sun world that's been destroyed. It's a barren wasteland with no future, that people have taken more than they can give, that uh, they've pushed things to the limit and they've destroyed everything that's come before it. Is that not the console ecosystem in 1998? Is that not the, the, the effect of the console war? Like, there's so much to it. And it builds such a cohesive setting that fuses with both those themes and obviously the amazing art. Civitas to Feng Jad Tulansi. To S to Intersvenia. Laos de Sefir, Lopiza as a mutus. So that was the end of Panzer Dragoon Saga, my favorite JRPG of all time. This game is so unbelievably fundamentally cool. I love every single thing about it. Uh, even if you've watched this playthrough, uh, give the game a try if you ever can. Uh, just kind of play it, feel what it feels like. It is a really unique feeling game. The combat is very fun. Um, it doesn't waste any time. This game was, what, 16 hours long? We've lived the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> That's what the credits say. That's how I feel. Thank you for watching, uh, and uh, we'll see you for Orta next.